You're listening to the free feed of occult symbolism and pop culture, which means you're missing out. Help the show out. Get rewarded with bonuses. Join any of my three supporter feeds. You'll get the ad-free experience, early access, and unlock hundreds of bonus episodes the free feed losers don't get to hear. You can also score free books, discounted merch, and more. The most popular option is patreon.com slash Illuminati Watcher. The easiest one is Apple Premium, where you sign up on the app. The cheapest one is my own, IlluminatiWatcher.com VIP section. Compare the three platforms at IlluminatiWatcher.com. Hit the VIP tab up top. Links are always in the show notes. Ooh, yeah! In fact, he admits, ironically, at the beginning of the paper that um, there have been real government conspiracies, and JFK is one example. So he, he admits and concedes some ground at the beginning of the paper, and then he talks about um, how epistemology and philosophy, which is just our theory of knowledge, how that works, and then goes on to say that you know the way the government should really combat these things is through uh, flooding the market with with fake conspiracy. So that's just a classic, you know, paper. And it, Sunstein went from being Obama's czar of something to then going to work at the NSA. Welcome back to Occult Symbolism and Pop Culture. I'm your host, Isaac Wise. Up today, we're joined by a very, very special guest. It's Jay Dyer, folks. And he's going to break down the research he's been doing into the secret groups pulling the strings on everything we know, our reality, our entertainment, our politics, everything. Major themes he's finding in entertainment. We talk about the occult symbolism of Dune because my man's read all the books. He knows where the storyline goes. And we talk about the agenda within science fiction. Uh, we even postulate some connections to James Shelby Downard's King Kill 33. And we get Jay's personal take on Downard. We catch up on a lot of bizarre conspiracy theories being exposed by fighter Ryan Garcia. He's been claiming that he was at Bohemian Grove and abused and there's aliens. And he's got the, the footage to prove it. But we we pivot into the larger conversation, in fact, a quite important conversation on psychological operations and the psyops of conspiracies, because Jay's going to tell us about Cass Sunstein. He's a, a Harvard lawyer. He was Obama's regulatory czar, and he wrote this journal, this scholarly journal about conspiracy theories. And wait till you hear what Jay has to say about it. You're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. I downloaded it myself. I'm going to read it. Uh, it's a major agenda reveal about disinformation in the truth or world, but we're going to cover so much pop culture along the way. We're going to talk, of course, the movie Dune, Dune 2, Jay went and saw it. Did he get the popcorn bucket? Well, I'm going to ask him. We're going to find out. We're going to talk <laughs> Dune, the books of Dune, the writer of Dune. We'll talk a little bit of Twin Peaks. Of course, you know we're doing that. Uh, we got a great impersonation of Cat Williams. We talk a little bit about Epstein and Diddy and Jamie Kennedy and all kinds of stuff. You don't want to miss out on this one. Uh, this is Jay's, I don't even know how many times we've linked up. I've done his show. He's done my show. I've done Jamie Hanshaw's show. I need to get her on here too uh, because she gets into the occult realm of pop culture a lot like I do. So I'll put links in the show notes where you can connect with, with Jay and Jamie and everything they got going on. Oh, especially the event they got going on Friday, March 15th. You got to get to Los Angeles. He's doing a show with Jamie Kennedy, Jamie Hanshaw. It's five hours of a good time. Hollywood conspiracy and comedy. You don't want to miss it. It's on Eventbrite. You can get tickets right now while supplies last. I'll put the link in the show notes. Be sure to check that out while you're listening to this episode. And also, I will put in the show show notes the uh, sort of growing list of episodes we've done together. Uh, you can check those out if you want more. Uh, so without further ado, let's get Jay on stage. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he's back. He's the legend. He's the man. I think I think you're the reigning champ of episode appearances on the now occult symbolism. <laughs> he's soy facing out, folks. You know he means business. Uh, it's it's Jay Dyer. You I don't, he doesn't even need an introduction at this point. I I feel like uh, it's it's Jay Dyer. He's he's gracing us with his presence. We had a sort of situation where we could do a, la a last minute I, I got my man for 30 minutes and uh, I, I wanted to get you on here and talk to you but i wanted to catch up with with jay dyer the the life and times of jay dyer working with and jamie kennedy and just making big moves and then i want to talk to you real quickly about ryan garcia with this 
these tweets he's been saying stuff and um i know andrew tate was on the twitter spaces and i know you've talked to i think tate's brother before uh we could we could talk about ryan garcia and a lot of his theories he's pitching and um then i want to talk to you about this this big event you got coming up it's it's five hours uh that's insane uh but we're going to talk about all that stuff so anyways welcome back to the show jay dyer uh he's the man and he's back to talk to us today how, how you been jay what's new with you Ooh, yeah. oh, he's working it. do you do those impressions i, I like your impressions no. <laughs> no i'm not that oh, good gotta, at it you farm it out i farmed that out on fiverr <laughs> i found a guy uh it's funny i did a, i did one with a guy who did a leo dicaprio but he's irish and he kind of he kind of fumbled one of the terms i forget oh, yeah. what, and uh he does a really good it was a really good impersonation, but then a couple of the, the terms he uses have an Irish accent, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, know, so it messed it up. But, dad, yeah. dad, this is a totally different thing with Jamie Kennedy. This is totally different thing. <laughs> that's pretty I good. I don't know if you've listened to much Jamie Kennedy, but when you're talking <laughs> yeah. to Jamie Kennedy, that's that's the vibe. So, yeah, we had a lot of fun. We'll talk about that later. But, um, yeah, I'm happy to catch you up on, on whatever topics. I've um, yeah. been listening to your podcast. You've been killing it. Really appreciate it. Uh, all the good work that you're doing so um yeah I'm, where do you want I'm, to start? Fo- I'm following you jay dyer you know i feel like right now as you know i'm i'm deep into twin peaks a, yes. a topic we've we've we glossed over actually last year i had you on we talked about your event you did last year with jamie kennedy which yeah. you know you're coming back to do again in la uh in march but the as you know, I think we talked about Twin Peaks last time just a little bit, and I'm deep diving into it, and it's fully consumed me at this point. And you, you were one of the people back for people who don't know our history. You, I've always, I've always been following you, man. Like my, I, I'm always, I'm, I'm your shat, I'm your Cooper, and I'm Shadow Cooper, <laughs> fought, trying to track, trying to get catch up. You're to evil, you. you're evil Coop. <laughs> I'm evil Coop, and uh, and I was, I was filling out the links for the show notes, and I just made a, a connection because your your twitter is jd007 and i and i've got a 007 tattoo right and you oh, know that's nice. all and it's funny because i actually got this tattoo when i was 18 and before i i didn't even know who john d was back then um but anyways all these weird sort of influences but we started connecting back i started blogging in 2011 and i stumbled upon your blog jaysanalysis.com shortly thereafter oh and- that, that long ago dang yeah, yeah, and you and you'd started blogging. I think in two thousand nine, if I'm not mistaken. I had a blog in two thousand seven, eight, and then I just totally revamped everything and started over, focusing on yeah you know, Hollywood symbolism and that kind of stuff. So, oh, okay, it was around twenty eleven when the new website was started. Oh, okay, so yeah, that's I'm cool. Gonna... That uh, you, yeah, I, I got into the Lynch stuff in high school, but a lot of David Lynch back in the nineties, I didn't get it. So I was just kind of like, this is weird and like you're saying about your tattoo, like I didn't know anything about tulpas and Tibetan Buddhism and transcendental meditation and metaphysics and theosophy and all the stuff that Lynch loves to go into. So it was actually uh, around that time, the, like the late 2000s, maybe about 2011, 12, where I was like, I'm going to give Twin Peaks another chance because I wrote an analysis of Lost Highway, which I th- thought, okay, this actually is about mind control disassociation multiple personalities it ties into hollywood then i went back and redid mahalan drive and i was like actually this is about the same type of stuff it's like girl goes to hollywood she ends up kind of dissociating crazy um has she been mind controlled she looks like she's basically a, a crack hoe now so you know that went in the directions i didn't expect so then i revisited twin peaks and yeah, I think, you know, the depth that you've gone, you've gone into more depth than I did on it, um, I think. But you came to realize the same stuff that like, OK, so he's actually dealing with a lot of the the same type of really deep material. Um, I revisited the Lynch uh, Dune as well. I've actually gotten into Dune, the novels and um, and there's a lot of depth in mind control, espionage, all that kind of stuff going on in the Dune story, too, which might be why David Lynch really wanted to to do the movie back in the 80s. So. Yeah, I'm glad to see that you're, you're on the Lynch train, and that's really cool. And, you know, Mark Frost's book came out, which I'm sure you have a few years ago. And that really vindicated a lot of us in the movie analysis world who were trying to decode this bizarre, you know, two-series TV show at the time. The third one wasn't out yet. You know, trying to figure out what what is all this about. Seems like a secret society, the occult, demons, you know, mind control, 
aliens coming into the four. Um, and we were really vindicated with the Mark Frost book because he's like, yeah, this is tying into Crowley. This is tying into Babylon working, the rituals, all that. So, yeah, I'm glad to see that you came to the same conclusions. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating, the story. And right now I'm I'm working on, you know, I, I went episode by episode and now I'm actually the, the listeners are I think they're on season two, episode 10 ish and i'm actually working on the season two finale right now because i've recorded all this stuff previous to that and i'm just kind of releasing it every couple weeks i release a new episode and the uh finale is been quite a project to try to decode i'm almost done but i'm finding a lot of like you, you know, to to summarize and i'm finding a lot of the occult ideas of you know, apocalypse, opposing polarities oh, yeah. coming together, yeah. some kind of destiny laced in there for Cooper and Laura and Annie even. And it's, it's just it's it's really mind blowing. But Lynch is uh, a fascinating, a fascinating person, him and Frost. And the the uh, it's funny because when I was a teenager, I watched um, Lost Highway. We talked about this last time, but yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the only Lynch work I had covered. And then or I'd read or watched. And then last year or the year before when Dune 1, the remake, came out, I watched it for the first time, obviously, and I had never seen the original Lynch Dune film. And, you know, as, as you know, part one of the new Dune remake is only sort of the first half of the story of right. Lynch's 80s Dune movie. And I went back and watched the 80s Dune movie because, I, I, you know, I was into this Twin Peaks thing at the time. And I thought, oh, man, I should watch that. And it, it blew my mind. I was like, holy crap, this is really good. So I'm and and the Dune remake I thought was fantastic. I haven't seen Dune 2 yet. Oh, I, man, I dude, saw that you saw it. You said it was good, right? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Is it? Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah and you know, check course, it out. sci-fi, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of most sci-fi because it tends to be a lot of propaganda, a lot of uh trying to get us to buy into a bunch of nonsense. Um, but the weird thing about Herbert's Dune is he's kind of an outlier in that world because it's a future where AI is banned, which is uncommon in <laughs> yeah, no uh, you know, sci-fi. And there's no aliens. We're just dealing kind of with um, the existing you know, humanity as it is. And there is a kind of a powers maybe in an evolutionary sense, kind of like X-Men type of stuff, where certain people are kind of uh, developing these, these powers, which allow them to do things beyond since data they call it the weirding way which actually ties into the occult because weird women uh back at you could go to shakespeare right the in uh, macbeth you have the three uh, witches that are called the weird sisters wyrd is the old i think old english for a witch a weirding a weird woman so the weirding way is this kind of occult technique where words uh give expression to life and death and so eventually in the story, as Paul becomes a kind of a demigod type of figure, his name itself becomes a killing name, Muad'Dib. So um, that's just one element. You've got secret society, sisterhood of witches that mind control people. They work like an intelligence agency, the Bene Gesserits, or you might call them the Bene Jesuits, as we've been joking right, uh, lately, because they operate like, uh, like spies. And um, you've got geoengineering, you've got terraforming you've got genetic manipulation of bloodlines which have these you know potentialities and powers you got did multiple uh associate uh, multiple uh, personality disorder mpd in you know by the time you get into the the later stories i don't know if they're going to eventually make these they may if, if they continue to be successful but uh paul's sister who's this sort of prodigy girl that's born she actually becomes a kind of uh horror babylon figure uh when you read Dune Messiah, which I was surprised. And I could tell, um, you know, he, Herbert pulls from a lot of perennialism and traditionalist writers. And uh, I could definitely see he, he might even be pulling from Horror of Babylon imagery uh, in Dune Messiah when we get to the storyline about Paul's sister, because she actually goes crazy and gets possessed by uh, her, uh, by the Baron, because the Baron is actually a relative of Paul. So. so it goes so have you read are there are there multiple dune i don't know anything about dune there's besides, six parts six parts. oh there's six books yeah and then lynch's dune film from the 80s did that just cover the first book or something or yeah oh okay much. oh all yeah, right yeah. Yeah. okay cool. so basically lynch's dune ends pretty much where the the new dune 2 ends okay 
And that's but did you get the bucket? Did you get the popcorn, popcorn bucket or say that again? Did you get the popcorn bucket or no? <laughs> when, when this was going around, I didn't understand, and I was like, "Oh, is, is people think this looks like a some kind of weird sex toy? Is that what that is?" And I, I guess so. Like, so I guess what I hear. If you have a worm fetish, which is weird because worms are kind of phallic, but it's like if you want to put your thing in a thing, I guess. I mean, it's just I don't know, weird. <laughs> yeah, they call that docking. Right. The, the, well, do you remember? So I remember back in the day that there was a thing called the Ovipositor that was a toy based on the alien story, the movie. And oh, it was yeah, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> the idea was that it was a sexual toy where people would insert it in themselves and inject eggs into themselves. Like yeah. that was a fetish of some kind. Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, the science fiction world is weird and I'm not super into it necessarily, yeah. but I, I'm down for any kind of, of the alien films and these Dune movies are, are, are great. Did, did you, um, a couple things. Have you, have you researched James Shelby Downer a whole lot? He wrote that King Kill 33 about the mysticism. Yeah, I'm, I have, uh, Carnivals of Life and Death. I've read that. I have, okay. I've read King Kill. And uh, I read a lot of Hoffman stuff and Hoffman was influenced by Downard. Um, the weird thing about Downard, I'm not saying it's not worth looking at. It's just like you get kind of these admissions like some or much of this may or may not be true. So that's a good uh, point. Know, I don't know. It's, it's hard to know. It's, it's interesting from a literary perspective, the stories and tales that he weaves about Southern masonry and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it's hard to know, you know what what's legit and what he's just kind of um uh, embellishing yeah yeah he talks about uh because i'm revisiting king kill 33 as part of my twin peaks analysis and i'm finding that a lot a lot of ideas and concepts he presents in there show up in mm. the world of twin peaks mm. and i i without a doubt know that lynch and or frost have are familiar with james shelby down yeah. I, I have no that doubts in that but the he talks about Macbeth and the three witches and I'm and I'm uh I'm damn near illiterate. I've never even read Shakespeare. I barely know what the Macbeth story is besides the you know Wikipedia article. So that's interesting that you found a connection of of Dune with Macbeth as well because that's what uh, James Shelby Downer talks about yeah. being part of the King Kill ritual. Well, Herbert was uh, super well educated and he was again an outlier in terms of sci-fi because. I'm not saying this makes him necessarily quote a good person. I mean, the the themes of Dune are not Christian, but they're like a form of kind of syncretistic perennialism where it's like, uh, you know, he's very influenced by uh, Sunni Islam. Uh, the book is influenced by Zen philosophy. It's influenced by Catholicism. So it's in the future, you have this weird blended religion that's like a mix of Islam and Catholicism. And they have this, text they call the the orange catholic bible which is sort of the religion of the universe of dune and <clears throat> the political people don't believe it they take it to be just a tool and the Bene Gesserit witch sisterhood are the missionaries they're called the uh, missionaria protectiva and for many years many generations they've been seeding this myth of the quizatarak or the sort of god being that paul sort of kind of becomes a contender to be um so there's a lot of borrowing from you know ideas of like bir virgin ish births outside of the norm i mean paul's not a virgin birth but they're taking a miraculous sort of birth he's not supposed to be born they're only supposed to have women and the Bene Gesserits would abort male children because they don't want the quizas hadarach to be a male because they feel like they won't be able to control him so they kind of want to be the power behind the throne and anyway point being is that he's pulling from a lot of these archetypal religious themes in a perennialist sense. So, you know, it, it makes sense again, why that would maybe appeal to, to Lynch. But I mean, again, like there's straight up in culture, mind control programmed assassins. I mean, all of that is in the Herbert novels writing in the sixties. So he had to be privy to some pretty high level, maybe intelligence stuff going on, um, real conspiracy, so to speak. Uh, and do Messiah, just a quick note on that, that came out uh, at the time of the JFK assassination. And so Herbert noted that uh, he really wanted to warn people about the dangers of uh, autocracy and the state becoming God. And so a lot of people misunderstand the point of Paul 
in in the first novel but if you read the second novel it's more of a cautionary tale because paul ends up more of a tragic hero i'm not going to spoil it because it's it's worth i mean i like the stories enough that i don't want to spoil it and i want okay experiences i will tell you what happens but basically it's a cautionary tale it's not like a you know let's figure out how to create a religion where i can be a god being you know okay all right yeah interested yeah i'm intrigued now i i have a hard time reading fiction but i i'm intrigued enough by the movies that i i would like to catch up on the rest of the stories uh, i know your time is limited so i want to keep it moving though sure the uh let's switch over to ryan garcia he's this boxer i, I think i he's a new name to me i didn't know who this guy was till yeah, yesterday and he's been i from what i understand the he was on twitter spaces with andrew tate i, I think hosting i'm not sure i don't even know what they were talking about i just saw the clip on tiktok where ryan garcia this fighter starts emotionally talking about how he's been subjected to abuse by i don't for lack of a better word the illuminati at, at bohemian grove and use and there's aliens and he's got proof of all these things what's your take on this are you following that story hey guys has it pissed you off to watch cryptos fly up in price for over a decade and you've still done nothing about it it makes sense. Crypto is complicated and it's really boring. Well, here's the good news. You don't need to know a thing about crypto to make the money that so many people have. The CopyMyCrypto.com membership site shows you the exact cryptos that YouTube's James McMahon personally holds, which means you just copy him. It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest. You simply copy along. So let me tell you more about James. He runs the Crypto with James YouTube channel which has over 54,000 subscribers. In the summer of 2020, he told his viewers to buy 26 cryptos. Had you put in 100 bucks into each one, it went on to be worth over $123,000. Of the 26 cryptos, his top pick of the year, the one that he singled out, called Phantom, went up 692 times from what he said. That one call alone has retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify this yourself. So if you'd like to join the 2,800 members who copy James, then pause what you're doing and head over to copymycrypto.com slash Isaac. That's copymycrypto.com forward slash Isaac. That's spelled I-S-A-A-C, right? Double A for double awesome. And you're going to find proof of everything I've said, but my viewers get full access for just $1.00. And you'll join me too, because I'm also a member. I've been watching James's videos and listening to his advice for years now, and I'm telling you, he knows his stuff. I've been banking fatties, and let me tell you, 2024 so far has been real good in the crypto market. And yes, you've missed out on Bitcoin, but there's over 2 million other cryptos. Do you really think you've missed out on all of them? Guys, don't waste any more time. Go to the site and read it. Once again, copymycrypto.com forward slash Isaac, two A's, so I-S-A-A-C, and you get in for a buck. It's ended money worries for so many. It may just do the same for you. Link in the show notes as always. Over 300 pages of esoteric doctrine exposed. Ancient wisdom from the mystery schools. Embedded into your favorite music, films, and TV shows. Symbolism hidden in plain sight. Get your copy of The Dark Path on Amazon. The narrated audiobook is now available on Audible. Click the link in the description below. All right, all right, all right. I did look at it because everybody suddenly started talking about it because anytime Mario Nafal on Twitter talks about something, then the most of Twitter ends up, ends up talking about it. Um, unfortunately, I, I think this is not a very trustworthy person. I don't know anything about this guy beyond, like you said, his recent, what I would call kind of viral marketing. I think people are figuring out that if you rage farm on Twitter or, you know, engage in this kind of like uh, outlandish stuff, it gets you a lot of attention, a lot of eyes. And so it's really nothing to do with what's true or false. And, and I'm not trying to be mean to the guy. I don't have anything against him at all. But I can, you know, you can sort of pick up on red flags where if I notice that in the rest of that person's timeline, it's all a lot of erratic, kind of unstable. God's talking to me. I'm talking to God. 
uh, I'm going to talk in tongues right now, blah, 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 jibber, 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 this kind of stuff. And then it's like, oh, it's just that Bohemian Grove and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't think that's what go. I mean, Alex went into Bohemian Grove. He filmed the ritual. Um, so we know that goes on. And maybe there's something that goes on in the background. According to Nixon, we know it's a lot of uh, Hama erotic stuff. Could be, uh, could be something worse, but we just don't have evidence of that. And it just seems really implausible. And given the rest of what he's tweeting about, he doesn't come off as a reliable character, but more of an unstable character. Mm, okay. Yeah. There's a, there's some, he's, he's, I noticed, cause I started looking into it and cause I had so many people, you know, how it is everyone's tagging you and Hey, check out this guy. Exactly. What's he doing? You know? Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. I saw that he's got a fight coming up in April and I thought, yeah. well, I mean, come on, strange timing. And, and with, with, and again, I'm, I'm with you. I don't know the guy. I got nothing against him. And, if he's telling the truth, I sure hope that he releases the the evidence. And that's my, that's always been my beef with a lot of people who've been on the verge of exposing the big thing who say they've got the receipts and the proof yes. and, and they never release it. I'm like, if you really were scared for your life and you really were subjected to these things, I feel like the first time you would talk about these things would be the time you would release all this stuff so that if you're worried about them coming after you and, and taking you out, you have sort of undeniable proof that you've already released, you know, I don't know, but I'm not in that position either, but uh, I do think he's, I, what's interesting is because you, this is why I wanted to talk to you about it because you also have been in this world, this conspiracy world long enough that you remember sort of 10 years ago versus today and how different things are. And today, these kinds of ideas get more traction more people are susceptible to believe these things which i think is good however i i do get concerned sometimes because i think a lot of people get because i've talked to people in my personal life in fact there's there's people i know personally that when i told them about what i research you know back in 2017 i had conversations with them and they were mocking me Right. Uh, it hurt my feelings, you know, cause they were my friends. I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I, and I, I don't talk to people about it a whole lot because of that. And now people I'm look up to me. QAnon entities going to come down and <laughs> drink your adrenochrome tonight, Isaac. Yeah. Yeah. That, and, 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 and I don't know, I don't know what to, I don't know what to think about it because some people get, people are starting to open up their, their minds to these things. But right. then I think they kind of go too deep into it sometimes and, and they start, they start, uh, you know, wanting to, want, wanting to burn the world down. And, and I don't like that either because I think, uh, I don't know, man, like I, I don't, I don't know what the right answer is. I don't know what the right level of response is because some people are more radical than others. And, and they, and they, and they look at this and they say, dude, they're messing with the kids. Like we gotta, we gotta take them out. And I, and I get that sentiment, that sort of warrior sentiment. But then I also think, man, I don't know. Like what, what if, what if we're a little bit off on, on our, or on our theories, or maybe we got the wrong guy, you know, Tom Hanks is a classic example. Yeah. I've looked into the Tom Hanks thing and, and I get why people talk about the guy, but I'm also, I'm not committed enough to be like, Oh no, he's definitely the guy. And we need to, you know. yeah, I think there's a totally valid concern for the danger of jumping to conclusions and non sequiturs, right. Without, actual solid proof and one thing alex has pointed out that i agree with uh, for a long time is that for whatever reason people love the really sensational outlandish stuff and they'll jump on that and they'll ignore or find boring or trivial the really hardcore solid stuff right like yeah. epstein is like 100 solid totally you know nailed i mean I've been reading Whitney Webb's book it's all it's excellent particularly the part two about epstein i mean it's all right there and oh but let's talk about you know q crap oh let's talk about you know this really outlandish stuff that you can't actually prove but it makes for some kind of you know i mean this is the whole idea i guess behind tabloids you know people just love that kind of crazy stuff yeah taylor swift is xena levey i mean that's just jamie was pointing that out i've always thought that was so stupid oh look katie perry is the grown-up version of uh john benet ramsey i mean it's just so dumb it's like yeah and, then, and all that does is really make everybody look silly and i think that a lot of people genuinely believe dumb fake conspiracies not because they're malicious but also we have to keep in mind that fake conspiracies are very useful 
and they've been used for a long time by intelligence agencies. I'm reading a book right now about the CIA's use of religion, and uh, it's written by an academic guy, not a conspiracy text. It's called Aaron into the Wilderness, CIA, the CIA and the History of Religion. And he's talking about various things that the CIA cooked up, one of which was a uh, actually, I could you not, a staged second coming. And they thought if they could pull this off, how useful this would be to convincing, say, Roman Catholics in uh, countries in Latin and South America where there might be a tendency to believe in Sovietism or communism. Now, I'm not saying that makes Sovietism or communism good, but you can see that that doesn't make the CIA good because they want to pull off a fake second coming. And by the way, if they're willing to engage in a fake second coming, you better believe they're willing to engage in a fake and staged and fake and gray alien invasion, right? I mean... It's just it's in the same it's in the same deck of cards. So, you know, fake conspiracies, fake um, stage things. I'm not saying everything's fake, but these types of operations are definitely the playbook of the intelligence agencies. And they use, um, you know, what Cass Sunstein's famous paper, right, was uh, um, about uh, cognitive infiltration, which was to go into alternative media and conspiracy groups and the Internet sphere and flooded with fake conspiracies that was his whole famous paper that he wrote that got him the job uh of being one of obama's czars right was this who was that sorry i, I didn't catch the Pat name sunstein wrote the famous paper uh on it's called uh um it's a paper called it's his paper on conspiracy theories and epistemology um and it posits the theory in there that uh if the government wanted to disrupt alternative media and conspiracy theories online the best way to do that would be to go into it through what he called cognitive infiltration and just flood it with dumb fake conspiracies. So I think we have seen, you know, in the last 10 years or so since that paper came out, um, quite a few of those. Right. I mean, in my opinion, I don't I'm not into the flat earth stuff. I'm not into uh, I don't mind people questioning those things. But I think QAnon is another classic example. I mean, I called out QAnon day one. So. For me, those are just examples of the of these yeah. kinds of fake conspiracies. And I'm not saying that Ryan Garcia is therefore an agent, but you can have kind of unstable people who really disseminate a lot of uh, disinformation, uh, even unwittingly, because they're just kind of loose cannons and unhinged. And I think you're totally right that uh, there's a danger uh, in those kinds of people dis- basically neutralizing real questioning. Yeah, and I'm not a I'm not above that myself because I know I I study a lot of ideas of how to create content for social media, like the business side of things, right? And I will make a one minute video, and it's got to be short. It's got because everyone's got ADHD or ADD or whatever now, and like you got to get their attention. You got to hook them in two seconds, get yeah. their attention, say something sensational, so people comment and fight in the comments. Like that's how you get videos to go viral, unfortunately. So I will employ some of those things to very briefly to the point. I'll just like, for instance, I got in trouble because someone got mad at me because I, I, I said Thoth was an alien, and it's like, well, I mean, that's an oversimplification of it, but you know, I don't. It's not so far off base, right. uh, based on a bunch of different things, and and people get mad and they get in the comments, but it works, right? It gets it gets eyes on it, like, and that's what Ryan Garcia could very well be doing is. Yeah talking about these well-known conspiracy subjects that you know you know was down there in bohemian grove what was that 20 years ago he did that yeah, i mean exactly. we've known about it for a long time so it, it is possible that this is just viral marketing it's possible yeah. that he's got maybe for lack of better term handlers that are saying hey we need to get this pay these pay-per-view numbers up here's one way you can do it exactly just do it and it, it is an interesting time to be alive Bro, yeah. I think we saw that very same thing with the whole Taylor Swift, Travis Kellis, whatever his name is. Yeah. <laughs> right. But uh, I mean, that whole thing was a drama that tied into the Super Bowl and that helped get the ratings up. I think that's told that was that was Sam Tripoli's analysis. And I totally agree with that. Yeah, it, it is marketing. interesting. And, and and I found that we in the in the late 2010s around 2016 to 20 there was this period where conspiracy theorists were under attack and they and they censored us shadow banned us right and i still operate under that assumption because it does still happen but i oftentimes wonder if lately that 
this stuff doesn't get actually more traction now. And they, the social media companies are more okay with spreading it because I've found that some of my videos where I talk about these very, you know, dicey subjects, they'll still get tons of views. And I think, well, that's kind of weird. Like I usually in the past, I would, I would get warnings and they'd, they'd shut you down or whatever. So I do, I do wonder if there's not, you know, you were saying about that cognitive infiltration. I, I, I'm going to have to read that article, man, or that, uh, that you essay. Should read it. it's, it's not probably not what you expect from like a government sort of. So he basically, he was writing this, I think uh, coming out of Harvard and it's like, and it's a, uh, law, uh, like he's a law person. So he oh, went from wow. Harvard law and okay. wrote this, uh, this S it's like an academic paper. It's 15, 20 pages. And, and it's actually about, a, about philosophy. It's, it's not the kind of government, you know, operation kind of paper you expect. He admits ironically at the beginning of the paper that, um, there have been real government conspiracies and JFK is one example. So he, he admits and concedes some ground at the beginning of the paper. And then he talks about, um, how epistemology and philosophy, which is just our theory of knowledge, how that works. And then goes on to say that, you know, the way the government should really combat these things is through uh, flooding the market with, with fake conspiracy. So that's just a classic, you know, paper. And it gets something went from being Obama's czar of something to then going to work at the NSA. So this is, you know, this is a, a legit serious person in the, in the establishment. Um, and, you know, there's all been famous examples of, parallel fake conspiracies like uh operation uh, uh not torch but uh um the one that was like the earlier version of QAnon back at the time of the, where the bolsheviks came up with an idea to uh ferret out all of the people that supported the czar by coming up with a fake white hats within the system uh league that you could join and then when all the people who opposed the bolsheviks joined the bolsheviks were actually running this and uh, they knew then who all of all of the counter revolutionaries were. So it allowed them then to purge those people. And that's kind of a model for this, you know, these fake ideas of like, oh, there's secret heroes within the system and they're going to save us. And if you just, you know, sign on to this, uh, you know, get your boomer decoder ring and see what the <laughs> Q drop is this week and look at the color. Donald Trump's ties, one of its red ties. Unbelievable. P gotta be insane when I wear red ties. Okay. I, my, I've got to work on my Trump. It's not Shane Gillis level. Obviously, he's like he's like the master. But Dude, I'm gonna get, good at it. I'm gonna get it. Gonna get it. Anyway, I mean, just the silliness of like, oh, Trump wore red ties. He's speaking to us boomers and just nonsense, right? Um, but yeah, it's, it's real. It's actually modeled on uh, older. Do you remember Nasera? Are you familiar with that? No, that doesn't I know you don't want to talk about all this this kind of crap today, but it just got no, I know you I know you're like the king of this kind of stuff, man. Well, no, Sarah is a uh, was this thing back in like the late nineties and early two thousands, and I forget what it stands for, but it was like this there's patriots in the government, and it was like came it started at the time of Clinton era, and the, the idea was that the white hats in the government are going to arrest Bill Clinton at any moment. Oh and really? all of these idiot, yeah, all the all the uh mil the militia patriotard crowd fell for this back in the day because it went out in a lot of um, newsletters and they were believing in this and it was all just bs so if you the acronym is n-e-s-a-r-a -E and actually believe it or not some of the people involved in nasera then jumped on to the q crap <laughs> at the time of QAnon, and they continue to ride this nonsense um it's just just a bunch of silliness but um, yeah, I mean, and there's other examples, uh, Mirage Men. I mean, Mirage Men is the same mm -hmm. type of stuff mm -hmm. applied to the sphere of the so-called alien disseminators and, and, and uh, chosen people to disclosure, basically. Do you know if Bill Cooper, who's one of my red pill daddies, was he maybe associated with that Nasera in any way? Do you know? I don't know. That's a obscure Not that question. I know of. Actually, he would be t typically more conspiratorial so he probably would i don't recall but he probably would have been saying oh this is a scam don't fall for it um I, you know i never did really fall follow cooper that closely i read uh pale horse back in the day yeah. i know it had some in some interesting information and then i think cooper had a position initially where he thought jesus was a hologram of the aliens and then i think he backtracked that position and said that was dumb i should have believed that so <clears throat> i've never really had a strong opinion on cooper either way 
but my inclination is that he probably would have rejected Nasera as a scam. You ever talked to Alex Jones about Bill Cooper? Does he have an opinion on? Because I know Cooper was him and Jones had. Uh, I don't know. I've heard videos of Cooper trying to say like Alex was whatever. I don't know. He, he yeah, didn't agree with him. You know what I mean? Alex has addressed it, but I don't remember the last time he addressed like what he said exactly. Honestly, oh, okay. just curious. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to see any of our conspiracy daddies or brothers. I can tell you that he's not Bill Hicks. I can tell you that <laughs> confirmed. Okay. All right. I, I know I'm keeping you later already, but I, I want to talk to you about this the show in Los Angeles Friday, March fifteenth. Hollywood conspiracy and comedy. Jamie Kennedy, Jay Dyer, Jamie Hanshaw. What are you guys going to talk about for five hours, please? Well, this is a damn fine cup of Joe. I can tell you that. So when I did the last time we were in LA, I so I opened up with like like twenty minutes of impressions, right? So I went through about forty different impressions. <laughs> That's the one nobody could guess who it was. And I'm like, hey, I'm Gordon, in LA, it, and nobody knows a David Lynch impression when they hear it. That's Gordon Cole, isn't it? You would think, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So basically, we have a lot of fun at our live events. We had so much fun last time. Um, I was really nervous about it. Didn't didn't know if it would come together uh <laughs> jamie he showed up right before his his uh, uh stand-up so i was like is he coming <laughs> oh <laughs> right? wow so, you maybe i was a little nervous sweating a little bit but he came uh he killed it he was really funny uh, everybody loved his his set and uh he's actually really good at kind of improv and kind of making it fit the setting so he doesn't just do like a pre-packaged you know like oh here's the 20 year old jamie kennedy routine like he actually you know makes it fit the setting that he's in so so i did so you know a lot of impressions and then jamie my wife gave her talk she did an awesome hour and a half on uh occult hollywood and symbolism this time she's updating it doing new material she's doing a whole new talk on hollywood and witchcraft so we're going to go nice. deep into wicca the history of witchcraft um all that then i do a talk I, last time i did a talk on philosophy this time i'm updating it to deal more so with hardcore geopolitical dark uh, demonic conspiracy stuff like epstein blackmail how that all goes down how that ties into the spiritual side of stuff um recent information even has come out with i don't know if you've seen all the diddy drama oh Cat yeah williams um listen isaac we got to we got to talk about a lot of stuff right now okay there's a lot of people out here that ain't listening to cat williams but i've been saying it for 15 years okay i don't know if you saw the rogan you probably did yeah I, i've i've you seen did a breakdown. yeah i did a breakdown on the rogan episode i haven't listened to it yet but as yeah, well as the breakdown. so yeah i mean uh, that was pretty big I, I we did i think three podcasts breaking down the history of like gangster rap and cia breaking down uh, all the stuff Cat Williams talked about. So we'll be talking about some of that. Um, and from an academic perspective, I'm going to be going through a lot of the books. And then Jamie Kennedy uh, headlines with um, 15, 20 minute stand up set. Everybody gets to get their book signed, get to meet Jamie. He signs everybody's Scream DVDs and their, <laughs> you know, cool. uh, all, all that. So it's a lot of fun. It's a five hour event and it's more like a party. Like people come and our live events are lit. That's cool, man. Is it, is there a, there a, um so you talked about diddy for a second there are you going to talk about are you talking about like the because there's there's conspiracies about diddy being sort of raps epstein have, exactly. you, have you dug into that oh okay that's, that's the weird exactly thing is like so tristan and i did a podcast two three weeks ago two three weeks ago on a lot of what cat williams is saying we went deep into the shay shay interview the, the joe rogan event hadn't happened yet so i was going pretty deep into the background of diddy which i mean i've listen to puff daddy when i was in high school and you know but i didn't go into his arcana of the stories about him i just didn't know about that so i dug pretty deep into that and what's funny is that in that podcast i was like he's like the epstein of rap dude mm -hmm. wow Boom. here's that yeah, yeah so that was just my that. intuition but it turns out that that seems to look like that might be the case alle allegedly uh, yeah, so. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in there. I, I haven't, I've been sort of tracking it and I did a show on Diddy back in December oh, and did? now there's all these new allegations with. Oh, uh, so yeah, you were ahead of me on that. The, well, the, you know, that was back right after Cassie accused him of a bunch of stuff. There was a yeah. bunch of okay. different accusers and now he's in trouble because this other rapper, some, some guy I never heard of, I forget his name already, Lil Rod or something, mm -hmm. was accusing him of a bunch of stuff and he calls out names 
And there's a, a rabbit hole of Jay-Z connected in here because Jay-Z and Diddy were besties. And uh, Diddy said uh, that only two people are allowed to call him Sean, his mother and Jay-Z. Like, that's how close they are. And there's a lot of stuff about how Jay-Z's threatened to be exposed of a lot of dark dealings, apparently, and all this. But I, I don't know. I, I haven't dug deep into the new newest, but there's a lot there. And, and the Epstein connection is... It make it, it all starts to make sense, and you're like, "Oh, Diddy's been connected with literally everything that's huge in hip hop." You wouldn't think so because he's kind of uh, younger. People probably don't even know right. who he is, right. but he he's behind all the stuff: Tupac, Big, everything. And um, yeah, it ties yeah. into the history of Death Row and all that. And um, yeah. that there's a great chapter. Uh, my publisher has a book by John Potash called uh, "Drugs Weapon as a Weapons uh, Weapon Against Us," and there's a whole chapter on uh, Tupac, Biggie, and Death Row. And it's not immediately talking about Diddy, but if you read that chapter, you'll notice a lot of parallels to what's going on. And I think it does tie in. So <clears throat> you're absolutely right uh, to draw that conclusion, I think. So, I mean, that's not the focus of my talk. It's just new stuff that's kind of emerged that, you know, will be in this uh, in this talk, um, tying it into kind of big, big level nice. geopolitical stuff and how they how they control not just Hollywood, but as you know, the music industry as well. So, um, you know, we talked we touched on Hollywood a lot. So I want to kind of bring in a lot more of the music industry as well, uh, which I haven't really gone too deep into in the last few years. So, so yeah, so it's going to be a fun event, March 15th. Um, they're in yeah, Hollywood, uh, LA area. So yeah, I get your tickets uh, over on Eventbrite. It's linked uh, on my Twitter, on my uh, YouTube community tab, on my website, you'll see it everywhere there to get, to get the tickets. And, and I'm going to put the link in the show notes of where the listeners can grab those tickets while supplies last, of course. And, uh, you know, I, I wish I could be there for this. I, I need to get back out to L.A. because every now and then I'll try to get out there maybe once a year and try to schedule something with a uh, Tim Paul hat, you know, Damn, yeah. which I actually heard John Potash on. I think it was on Tim Paul hat years yeah. ago and yeah, it's been a there. fascinating show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but anyways, I know I've kept you late, man. Thank you for 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 jamming out with me for a little bit here. And I want all the I want all the listeners. You got to get out there, man. Uh, five hour show. Are you kidding me? This is going to be great. So. Uh, I'll put the link in the show notes. It's called Hollywood Conspiracy and Comedy. Jamie Kennedy, Jay Dyer, and Jamie Hanshaw. Uh, go get the tickets. All right. And Absolutely. any last places that you want them to go or to find you or to connect with you or Jamie or any of this stuff? Yeah, I mean, we're on. Uh, you can find Jamie's podcast. She does podcasts as well over on YouTube. Um, she's growing over there. Uh, she's on Rockfin. I'm on Rockfin. You can always find us there. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Jay Dyer, uh, Instagram, Jay's Analysis. Um, and then every Friday, fourth hour of Lord Voldemort. <laughs> still got You still got to use that term, huh? Well, I do because I don't know where this is going now, just to be safe. <laughs> so. That is a safe term. Okay. All right. I'll let you go. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Thank you so much. How's it? There you go. I had to hurry up. My, you know, Jay Dyer is a busy man uh, over there on and such. I only had so much time to get with him, so I, I had to hurry up and get through it. But, man, I feel like we could have unpacked that stuff for another three hours, uh, which is exactly what he's going to do Friday, March 15th for five hours. Jay Dyer, Jamie Kennedy. Yes, Jamie Kennedy from Scream, the famous actor and comedian. Jamie Hanshaw, who covers a lot of my occult concepts that we talk about here. She does it, too. She's got a YouTube. Uh, in fact, I did her show. We're supposed to link up again and do another one. But you can get tickets to catch it live. A five-hour show. It's going to be epic. Friday, March 15th in Los Angeles. Hollywood Conspiracy and Comedy. Get your tickets on Eventbrite. I linked it in the show notes. If you can't find it there for some reason, you can go to all of Jay's social medias or jaysanalysis.com, and you can link to it there. Uh, but, but don't miss out on that opportunity. And like I said, I'll put links to a lot of our past shows we've done. You're going to find, if you listen to the old ones, how prophetic a lot of the conversations we had had uh, on what's happening in our world today. So uh, thank you for listening. Thanks to Jay and Jamie for, for keeping me in their, their world of big moves, <laughs> not leaving me in the dust. Uh, but I appreciate them, them getting on the show, and I appreciate uh, Jay taking his time with us. So. Yeah, check out JL everywhere. Get those tickets. Till next time, stay positive.